I will run through problems 10, 11, and 12 here. Uh, I'm assuming that the rest you just said it cuts out at 10, so I'm assuming the rest you could hear. If you have any questions, just let me know. But as was mentioned earlier, what I like to do is, especially if I have two different trig functions, but even, even if I don't, I still like to do this just to make my life a little easier is I'll assign a variable for each of the trig functions in there. So in this one, maybe I'd say X is the cosine of theta and Y is the secant of theta. And, and then you can use obviously whatever variable you want, just put something in there that you can replace it. So this would become negative X, Y plus the square root of two times X minus 2y equals negative 2y. So once I'm here, I can start to solve, and I'm going to get everything on one side by adding the 2y over. This is just algebra here. That leaves me with negative xy plus the square root of 2x equals 0. And then I can factor an x out. In fact, I'm going to factor a negative x out because each term has an x. And so y minus the square root of 2 is what's left in each equals 0. And then when I go up to do my solving, I would say that the opposite of x equals 0 and y minus the square root of 2 equals 0, except for I'm not solving for x and I'm not solving for y. Um, actually, let me solve this. This is when x is 0 and this is when y is the square root of 2. But this is where I'd plug back in the trig function. So when is the cosine 0 and when is the secant the square root of 2? Cosine of 0 is not so bad. Um, that one happens um, up here and down here. So that's when theta is pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. So those are my two answers for that. And then the secant of theta is the square root of 2 when the cosine of theta is 1 over the square root of 2 or when I rationalize the denominator, the square root of 2 over 2. And that happens in the pi over 4 family. So theta is pi over 4 and um, also positive in the fourth quadrant, that would be 7 pi over 4. So my whole answer becomes that whole thing there. Okay. Um, so again, the key is um, start by assigning it to a variable and solving it that way. The algebra is much easier. And then you get back to a point where um, we see problems that we've done before. Factoring when you have multiple um, trig functions is going to happen a lot. Sorry for the lighting here. Not very good. Um, but I don't have ideal situations. So um, next one here, I have sine and cosine. When it's sine and cosine, it, again, it doesn't matter what variable you use, but when it's sine and cosine, sometimes I'll make sure I make x be cosine because that's what we're used to and y be sine because that's what we're used to. In, in the, our x, y coordinates, that's what they are. It goes cosine, sine. So sometimes I do that just for my own personal. So this is negative 2y equals negative 2yx minus 3 y, and again, I'm going to get everything on one side and set it equal to 0, so I'll add 2y, and I have 0 equals negative 2yx minus y. I'll factor a y out, in fact, a negative y out of each term, and that leaves me with 2x plus 1, and then I'll set my factors equal to 0, so negative y equals 0 and 2x plus 1 equals 0. So this is when y is 0 and when minus 1 and divide by 2, x is negative 1 half. So again, I go back and I say it's not y I'm interested in. This one is the sine. When is the sine 0? And when is the cosine negative 1 half? And then I can finish off my um, solution. So the sine is 0 at those two points, so that is at 0 pi and, and oops, 1 pi, sorry, not 2 pi. And in fact, I don't want to use 2 pi as an answer, because remember when it says solving for one lap around the unit circle, um, I don't include 2 pi. So 0 pi and 1 pi are my answers for there. And when is the cosine 1 half? 
Well, that's in the pi over three family and it's negative in the second and the third. So my theta here is two pi over three and uh, four pi over three. So again, there's my big answer for all of those. All right, one last one, uh, and then I'll get the video ready for the sub to show at the beginning of class before you take your test. So that'll be ready for you for tomorrow. But here I only have one variable. Um, I'm still gonna go through it the same way. I'm gonna set y equal to sine. Again, I just choose y because that's one I'm usually associating with sine. You can use whatever variable. So this is negative y minus two equals negative three plus two y squared. It doesn't have two variables, but I do have a squared in it. So I'm going to want to get everything on one side and factor. So I'll add the y and add the two on both sides. So add two and add y. And I'm going to rearrange this. So zero equals, I'll bring the two y squared first plus y minus one. And then I will go ahead and factor however I need to factor. This one is a good candidate for the um, snowflake method. I need two numbers that multiply to be negative two and add to be positive one, and that's two and negative one. Remember, cancel if you can, so y and one. So I have y plus one, two y minus one. Again, I'll set those equal, y plus one equals zero, two y minus one equals zero, so y is negative one, and add one divided by two, y is one half. Again, I'm not solving for y, I'm solving for sine. So when is the sine negative one, and when is the sine one half? And the sine is negative one at, um, uh, down here, so that's at, 3 pi over 2, and the sine is 1 half in the pi over 6 family, and in the first and second quadrant, so pi over 6, first and second, oops, I'm off the page, first and second quadrant that says, so that's pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. Again, hopefully finding those values isn't an issue. I think it's the solving and setting up that might be an issue. And my best advice is to put it in, like replace the trig with a variable, or again, in some instances, two variables, and then work your way through and solve. I hope that helps. Um, again, I will get the video ready for the sub to show before your test tomorrow. And um, good luck. Hope to see you soon.